What's going on folks? My name is Mike and today we're going to be looking at collision in SDL2. And specifically we're going to be detecting collision between two rectangles. So let's go ahead and hop in our code and learn how we can do this. So what I'm going to go ahead and show you is just a quick review of the support code provided with this lesson that's found in the GitHub repository. So going forward, we have in some previous lessons built a textured rectangle class here. And that has a few things, essentially a wrapper around a surface to load a texture, and then to create some rectangle. With it. We'll go ahead and review because we're going to be modifying this text rectangle to handle collisions. In a previous lesson, we have animated sprites, but I've commented those out for now. So here we set up SDL, create our window, create our render. And for this lesson, the important part, we create our two textured rectangles. And these are going to be the two objects that our goal is going to be to detect if a collision happens between them. All right. So what are we going to be able to need to do this? Well, we have our main game loop here. That's all of this code here, all the way down through here. And the idea is, or how this demo is going to be set up, is I'm going to capture mouse positions of our mouse here, which we, again, have looked at in a previous lesson earlier in the playlist. Uh, but if you need to review, this is essentially how you store the x and y coordinates of the mouse here, by getting the mouse state, storing it, and then setting up the current X and Y positions. So then every time we click the left mouse click, we're going to want to detect a collision, which is what our lesson's about today. And then, of course, we have to draw our objects. And I'm going to draw one of them at the current mouse X and Y position so I can move it around and then determine if collisions are happening or not. Finally, we'll render our objects. This is part of our current texture class interface. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and compile this program and just see what we're started with before we even get to collisions here. So just as a reminder, we've written a build script here, and you can look at some of the previous lessons for how to compile it. But for now, my build script will echo out the actual command that it's using on Linux. So you can see it here, just so there's no mystery. This is what the compilation looks like. And I'm compiling everything in this track. Then in my bin, I'll have my program. And I'll go ahead and bring my window here. And you can see I have two images that are textured rectangles, and one of them is following my mouse position. And our goal is going to be that once I overlap here, we get some sort of printout in our console so we know or are able to detect that some collision has occurred with these two shapes. Now, how do we actually do this in SDL2? Well, we have two strategies. So let me go ahead and just draw this out a little bit for the problem that we're trying to solve. That is rectangle collision. And the idea is if I have one rectangle here, which could be square in shape or whatever, and another one like this, I want to be able to detect that there was some collision here that did happen and return a value. Again, we use collision all the time if you're programming games to determine if some object has hit the player, if damage is received, or if you're just walking around an environment. So this is an important problem for us to be able to solve. And you can sort of break it down by figuring out, well, if I am sort of thinking about this as a uh, coordinate system, like my window, well, my rectangle here, I can sort of just project down these points here and figure out what this line is. And I can do that on the y-axis as well. And I'll draw a thicker black line here to indicate this is part of a rectangle. And I do the same thing essentially for my orange here. And I'll draw this here. And likewise here. So what we can see is that if I'm intersecting on the x-axis between these two lines and on the y-axis, then there must be some intersection taking place in our object. And that's essentially how you would program or think about rectangular collision. You'd think about, OK, what is the start of my rectangle? What is the end or the width of this shape? And then you would test to see if that range falls between, well, the same thing as this rectangle here. So that's a little bit of the math explanation of how you do this. And in fact, things get a little bit more interesting once you have to, for instance, rotate the shapes and do the same sort of experiment to determine, well, could there possibly be a, a collision here if this happened? And that's known as a uh, AAB or axis aligned 
bounding box collision check, which we'll look at in a future lesson. But for now, I just want to focus on detecting this simple case of collision. Okay, so how do we do this in SDL2 now that we understand a little bit of it? Well, I'm going to go ahead and visit our rect. Because, well, essentially, when we're drawing our shapes, they are just in rectangles. So this is our foundational uh, primitive here. But what is handy about SDL2 is that it does come with a has intersection function. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that because that seems interesting. And if I go ahead and look at this, you'll see that we do have a way to return a Boolean value, true or false, to determine between two rectangles if a collision did occur. So for this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of this function and implement it as part of our textured rectangle class so that we can determine if two textured rectangles did in fact collide. OK, so how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and look at our code here. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and open up our source directory, the textured rectangle CPP. And let's go ahead and open up the interface here. OK, so we can go ahead and see the various functions we have. So we don't have any sort of detect collision uh, function. And we do have to make a little bit of a design decision here. And in a lot of game engines, what they'll actually do is have some separate component or member variable for handling different types of collisions. For now, I want to keep things a little bit simple. Maybe in the future, we'll do a full lesson, uh, build out a game, and consider some of these things. So for now, what I want to do is just have something that returns true or false and detect collision or um, is colliding. So usually I like to name my functions in terms of a, a question here because it's returning true or false. And now I also need to decide, do I want to detect collisions with a textured rectangle or a rect? Well, if I really just want to detect between one of these uh, particular objects, like a textured rectangle, I want to see if I am colliding with some textured rectangle. I'll make it const because nothing used to change and whatever that object is. So that'll be our interface here. So detect collision. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and go to our implementation here. And I'll go ahead and uh, add our member function here. That's returning a Boolean value. It's a uh, textured rectangle. That's the scope of this uh, function. And we'll match the signature here, textured rectangle and some object. OK. And what we're going to do, again, is just return true or false relying on this function. SDL has intersection. So let me go ahead and copy this over from our documentation to our code. And I'll paste it in just so we have a easy access to this uh, function. Here. OK, so what do we have to consider here? And I'm just going to actually return this value here. And I might want to be actually a little bit more precise and return an SDL uh, bool. Now, why do I want to do this and actually match the uh, signature here? Well, remember, SDL is a C API, so I don't know what true or false means here. Well, that is, of course, unless I look in the documentation uh, in the index here, uh, SDL bool. And I have it ready here. You'll see that it just means a value of one or true or zero or false. So I could probably get away with it, but I'm actually going to match the API just so that we're here. OK, so with that said, let me go ahead and make a small change here. Again, since I'm relying on that interface uh, or SDL's uh, type system, I should be consistent. So I'll go ahead and do that here. SDL. Cool. OK. Now the second question is, how do I get the rectangle from this textured rectangle here? Well, we're going to actually need to have some sort of member function to return the M rectangle that is part of it. So let's go ahead and write a helper function. Do that. And again, we could just take in the textured rectangle. And we'll want to decide if this is something that we want to make publicly accessible or privately accessible. For now, since I don't see a need to return the actual rectangle, I'm going to make this a, a private helper function here. 
So let's go ahead and uh, have SDL rec be the uh, return value here. And I'm just going to call this get rectangle. And sometimes if it's just a really small function, I might attempt to inline it and write it in the uh, header here. And let me go ahead and just do that for now. Okay, so now what I should be able to do is, well, for my current object, I have the M rectangle. So let's go ahead and leave that as such. And then for the object that I'm colliding with, I should be able to just call the get rectangle function here. So object gets a rectangle, and it should return the appropriate thing. Okay, I'll make this just a little bit bigger so everything's on one line for you. And let's go ahead and give this a compile and see if we have is colliding successfully implemented. So go ahead and build here. Looks like I have a few uh, mistakes here that I'll need to fix. So let me just go ahead and scroll up so you can see what the errors are. This uh, needs to actually be a pointer. So I'll go ahead and pass the address in uh, of this particular object. In the future, we might actually want to change this to be a, a pointer. Uh, and manage that resource uh, and allocate it to, needs to be used. Uh, and let's go ahead and see here um, what else we have. Okay. Um, oh, this is just returning the actual uh, rectangle. So again, this these both need to be um, addresses of the things returned. So let's go ahead and just start with that. And um, one one way to to handle this is we want to return the actual. Uh, rectangle here, and we're not going to uh, modify it in any way, so it should return uh, const here. And then I should be able to return the address of that. Let's see if that makes it happen. Oops, and actually one other uh, glaring error here that I want to get rid of this uh, SDL bool, because I think that's uh, also causing some problems here. So another compile and another uh, round of fixing errors. And let me just go ahead and fix some of this up here. Um, so the issue, let me just simplify this <laughs> a little bit here. Let's just worry about returning uh, the actual rectangle here. Uh, and then this shouldn't change since I'm going to eventually pass in a uh, pointer here. So uh, let me go ahead and just uh, fix that up here. Um, and let's go ahead and make sure that all looks good. Um, and let's see where we are here. And for uh, get rectangle here, let's see. So we have guaranteed that this isn't going to change. Um, that is okay here. Let me just get rid of some of the punts things here. Because I think it's not uh, happy with that here. Uh, and then I need to match the uh, function signature. And this is part of the game. Uh, I have to play here, and then I'll enforce the uh, safety just a tiny bit more here um, in a second here. Taking address of R value. Um, actually, you know what the right thing to do here is probably just to create a uh, rectangle. That's not going to change here. Uh, temp. Uh, and it should be a pointer to the address of the uh, rectangle that we are retrieving here. And then I can just pass in temp here, and we'll just make that copy. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and see what is uh, get rectangle returning now. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself trying to optimize and avoid copies. Let's just again go ahead and just make the copy here and get this to compile, uh, and then I'll uh, straighten it out uh, in a moment here. Uh, and finally, since this is taking in a pointer, here's our temp, and there we go. So this should be good to go. All right, so now that we have our is colliding function able to take in some other extra rectangle, some object, retrieve that actual rectangle, or in this case, just make a copy of it, and then test against our current rectangle, we'll be able to see if a collision actually occurs. Okay, so. Um, what we're going to do here is now go inside of our main function and actually make use of is colliding. So let me go ahead and open up the source here and main. 
and I'll leave our interface here so we're aware of what is going on. So let's go ahead down to our drawing with our, um, our main loop here and implement our little to-do item here. And we have two objects, again, that we created that are textured rectangles, object one and object two. And since object two is the one that we're drawing or sort of moving around, I'm going to actually work on that uh, function here, or excuse me, that object. So object two dot is uh, colliding, and I want to test against object one. Okay. Uh, and remember, we're just passing in that particular uh, object. So that's all we have to do. And let's go ahead and do a little uh, if statement here. So that'll return true or false. And I'll do C out uh, is colliding and an end line here. And if it's not colliding, what I'll go ahead here is say else and we'll output not colliding. And we'll just output a message here. Okay, so the idea is that every time we click, that'll do a collision, collision test using our rectangular collision here that's built into the SDL, and we'll check if object two is colliding with object four. Okay, so we've got that saved. Let's go ahead and try to compile here, and then we'll give this uh, a run here. And I've got my SDL window here, and I'm gonna left click. They're not colliding, not colliding, getting closer. And they are colliding anytime I essentially click within this shape here. Even if I move out a little bit here, uh, they are still colliding, right? Because it's any part of the shape that would be colliding. Uh, so I'm going to click again here, click again here, click way out here, uh, click in this top corner again here, and so on. So you get the idea. And that's handling collision using the SDL2 rect command. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this lesson up. We found out about using SDL's full value. We learned a little bit about the theory of what rectangle collision is and how this is being implemented. And we used SDL's has intersection function to test between two rectangles if there was a collision. And then finally, we spent some time implementing this in our actual class. Uh, I'm gonna leave the little mistakes and troubleshooting because I like when folks see uh, how I work or fix things. Uh, and eventually I'll tighten up the code a little bit uh, in future lessons. So there you have it, folks. I hope this was a useful lesson for you. I hope it was fun for you to play around with this little demo here we have where we could test some collisions. And if you've enjoyed this, we'll see you in the next lesson. Please like and subscribe, and there'll be more to come soon. Take care.